Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. The economic slowdown is a fact everybody accepts. There is no dispute that India is going through one of its worst slowdowns in the post-1991 era. The question now is, how do we categorize it? How bad is it? And how do we tackle it? The Modi government is saying this is a cyclical slowdown and it's temporary and we will get over it soon. The question also comes to mind that have Indians witnessed such a slowdown? What has happened in the recent past? When we say recent past in the last say 10 or 15 years and especially in the last decade or so when you know, the world witnessed a very serious slowdown in 2008 which was called the global financial crisis. How did India cope with it? What happened before it and what happened after it and how did we go forward and reach where we are now? To discuss this, I have Professor Ila Patnaik. Uh, Ila, uh, the global financial crisis, 2008, which happened with Lehman, the American crisis at that point of time, and then it, it became a global spin-off. India escaped that uh, one uh, with not too much of bruises uh, in the Indian economy. Can you take us through uh, what happened then in the run-up to the global financial crisis and how we got here because you know I think history is also very significant when dealing with uh, economic uh, problems. Absolutely. So if you look at the growth and the fast growth that was happening in India in the 2000s in the run-up to the global financial crisis you know there were uh, this was overheating the uh, cover page of the economist uh, showing India as an overheating economy. It India was growing very, very fast. Part of what was happening was a huge increase in investment. And a large part of that investment was in the infrastructure sector. Mm -hmm. Now, the infrastructure sector was financed primarily by bank loans because we don't have much of uh, a bond market and, you know, the old style uh, uh, banks that used to just do long-term financing, uh, those uh, were wind wound down. Uh, government also did not have too much money. So they were through this vehicle of PPP, uh, public-private partnership, where uh, companies would take loans and these loans came from banks. How much banks uh, understood the risk they were taking and how much they did not, one doesn't know because, you know, a lot of public sector banking and the regulatory mandates uh, as well as political pressures are part of how public sector banks lend in India. So all that looked very good and the economy was growing very fast. Now when the global financial crisis came, then for a quarter or so we, we saw a very sharp decline in uh, GDP growth, but then growth bounced back because we did a lot of monetary, fiscal uh, easing. And all the way till 2011-12, we actually see that the economy uh, grows and bounces back mm -hmm. and then we start seeing the troubles that had uh, really built up mm -hmm. before the GFC mm -hmm. but with the uh, financial sector being hit mm -hmm. those troubles then start being seen and banks start, saw a lot of stressed assets at that time. Infrastructure as I said you know, overextending mm -hmm. of uh, banking sector exposure to that sector, as well as manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it wasn't just restricted to infrastructure, but that was a large part of the story. But, uh, you know, before the global financial crisis, when, you know, growth was uh, picking up and we even saw double digit uh, growth uh, during that decade, uh, the argument uh, made was the policy decisions, the reforms that were, you know, undertaken during NDA 1 when uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee was the Prime Minister started bearing fruit after 2004 when Dr. Manmohan Singh was Prime Minister which is what led to that growth. Is, is that something uh, you, you want to talk about? Yeah, th that, that could well be the case mm -hmm. uh, because you know some infrastructure uh, the way infrastructure was to be financed mm -hmm. and public-private partnerships were now uh, you know but UPA 1 and UPA 2 were very much 
uh, part of what was being done. NHAI had been set up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that was uh, the for the first time a body created uh, whose job was to build roads. You know, mm -hmm. So, the focus was much more, the CPWDs mm -hmm. had not functioned mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. But what we see in terms of banking and the impact of all of this kind of growth on banking, particularly because the fiscal remained weak, was that this laid the uh, foundations of the banking crisis, mm -hmm. which are having its repercussions today. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there were stressed assets, uh, the Reserve Bank tried for many months, it was, it believed, for many years actually, it believed that it's not going to be a crisis, so mm -hmm. you can restructure loans. Many schemes were tried for uh, restructuring loans and when all of them failed, then you started seeing the big stress in banking, mm -hmm. which eventually led you to a decline in credit growth and then that got you to a uh, growth of uh, the shadow banking sector or the NBFCs. Mm -hmm. And when ILF, ILNFS, which was an NBFC, mm -hmm. defaulted, the sharp slowdown uh, in sectors which had been funded by NBFCs mm -hmm. have, has now started. So, the story really goes back all the way to the early 2000s mm -hmm. because uh, you know we have an unreformed banking sector many of many of the things that needed to be done uh, were not done either by the upa or the, the following mm -hmm. nda regime mm -hmm. as well so and one of the most important ones was uh, that uh, the financial sector reforms that needed to be done mm -hmm. were not done and that's why i'm tracing this downturn in the cycle all the way back to the excessive growth in bank credit to mm -hmm. infrastructure that happened in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And I trace its origins to the unreformed financial sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ila, a similar uh, argument is made about what happened after the GFC when uh, Pranab Mukherjee was uh, finance minister 2011-12. And, and and people say that uh, India spent its way through the slowdown or, and you know the economy was given a huge stimulus and uh, the, you know the central government spent its way so that you know India doesn't get caught in the same kind of uh, problems the rest of the world was facing and uh, that is also uh, you know reason for what we are facing today. Absolutely and uh, you know again the lessons from that uh, are also very important because what was done was fiscal and monetary expansion mm -hmm. like what we are doing today without doing the structural reforms. Mm -hmm. And again, now we need to do structural reforms along with the fiscal and monetary expansion. Mm -hmm. you know, so at that time you did save the economy, but only for a very limited time. After 2012, investment started declining and it is still declining. Mm -hmm. Investment projects from the CapEx database show you that investment has still not picked up from 2012. Yeah. It's been a long, slow decline right. and it won't pick up now also mm -hmm. if all we do is uh, counter cyclical mm -hmm. macro stabilization, stabilization. policies, yeah. which is expansionary monetary and expansionary fiscal. They won't be enough. We no. also need to do these structural mm -hmm. uh, financial mm -hmm. sector reforms, direct tax uh, reforms, mm -hmm. all those need to be done as well. Because on the one hand, until 2014, there was this talk about policy paralysis. Uh, no reforms were undertaken. Uh, and on the other hand, there was the stimulus. So you, you spent money while your policy regime, your uh, economic uh, framework remained the same. So. Uh, did we overheat the system with too much uh, liquidity? See, uh, in, up till 2012, from 2008 to 2012, mm -hmm. uh, it was not overheating the system. The system had been overheated before, before and then it was hit by the crisis and then we tried to save demand mm -hmm. by uh, expansionary policies. Uh, what was done uh, in the Modi 1 uh, regime was a number of changes which are also disruptive mm -hmm. in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you got uh, the bankruptcy, insolvency and bankruptcy code, you did inflation targeting, you did, so that prevented too much liquidity when the rupee appreciates. Uh, you did GST. Uh, GST, but again, you know, 
all those are very disruptive and they are also work in progress. progress. So it's not that we've uh, already reaped the benefits of mm -hmm. the structural reforms we have and yet there are many more to be done. So what is the unfinished agenda according to you as of today? I think uh, three big things. Mm -hmm. uh, one is financial sector reform. We've done we've many, about we've yeah. talked about it many times. Mm -hmm. The second is uh, direct taxes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the third is open, uh, agriculture mm -hmm. because that is a huge sector Culture. that uh, absolutely needs reforms to many kinds of reforms both internal and external and uh, the, the subsidy and various other issues. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a whole big topic in topic itself, but those are the big areas where we need to do reforms. Cool. Thank you, Ila. Uh, the unfinished agenda uh, is long and it needs a lot of political will. Uh, it doesn't matter which party is in power. Uh, we'll keep coming uh, back to you with more uh, episodes of Elanomics. Keep watching us and subscribe to our YouTube channel.